Hey everyone, today we're going to have another long video that is going to be filled with valuable content. There are many ways to financial freedom from saving most of your income to winning the lottery. However, the most common way to wealth is entrepreneurship. Building a business is not easy, it is difficult, it takes years of hard work and a lot of stress, especially if it's a startup. However, with the rise of internet, starting a business has become much easier. A lot of things can be done through your smartphone and finding the right people has never been easy. But the problem is that most people don't know what business should they start and how to raise money for their business. The world is moving so fast that whatever business you're thinking about is probably going to be irrelevant by the time you build it. However, there are still plenty of businesses that aren't just growing but will definitely be booming in the next few years. So here are 15 profitable businesses you can start right now. There is going to be a table of content in the description so you can skip to the parts that you want to learn or come back and rewatch them again. This video is a combination of many of our previous videos. But before we start, here is a little disclaimer. This is not financial advice and everything that's said in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. It is going to be a really long video. So grab a drink and some snacks and most importantly, give this video a thumbs up and enjoy the video. What are the most profitable businesses you can start right now? Businesses that do not require a lot of capital. Of course, if you have a million dollars in your bank account, you have a lot of options. But what if you don't? What if you have just a few thousand dollars or a few hundred dollars? What should you do? Can you start a profitable business with as little as a few hundred dollars? How much can you earn from such a business? We will answer all of these questions and many more. So give this video a thumbs up and let's start with the first one. Number 1. Digital Marketing Before you turn off this video, please hear me out. I'm going to explain to you how you literally can make millions of dollars by starting a tiny small digital marketing business. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sell you any course. I have friends who actually run such businesses and before writing this script, I've talked to them just to make sure that I'm presenting to you with the most accurate information possible. Here is how it works. What is the one thing that every business in the world wants? Sales. If you can help any business to increase their sales, they're willing to pay. The higher the sales, the more they're willing to pay. And it doesn't matter what business is that. That's why businesses spend a lot of money on marketing, branding, building nice stores to attract customers, and so on. But most, especially small businesses, do not have the resources to have an entire digital marketing team. And here is where you come into the picture. Let's say it's a corner shop that sells glasses. Their clients are the people who live around that place or accidentally bumped into their websites when googling glasses. However, if more people knew about their products, they could double, triple or even grow their sales by over 10 times. Of course, anyone can put ads on Facebook, YouTube or AdSense. But not everyone could put effective ads that turn into sales. And that's what you have to learn to do. It's not easy, it's going to take you some time to master the skill. You might need to spend a few hundred dollars testing different strategies until you learn what works and what doesn't. You can literally go to any business owner and tell him, here is how I'm going to increase your sales by 30% for example, but I will take one third of the profits of all the sales that I drive. Any business owner would gladly work with you, to prove that you can put effective ads, you can give them a free trial. Of course, that business owner can learn to do that by him or herself. But when you have an entire business to run, you don't have the time for such things. It's much cheaper to just hire someone who is good at that. It doesn't matter what's going to be the social media of tomorrow. The foundation of this business is going to stay. Number 2. Crypto Businesses the crypto world is filled with scams. I get emails every single day to promote crypto products that look very, very suspicious to say the least. But because I love you and respect you, I would never promote anything that I wouldn't personally use. However, that doesn't mean there is any opportunity in this field. I believe that blockchain is at that stage right now as the internet was after the dot-com crash. 10 years from now, most people will look back and say that I wish 
I started the business in this field. Once this technology is widely adopted, it will be too late to create something really huge. Even if you started a simple e-commerce website 15 years ago, you could be making millions of dollars easily today. But what kind of businesses you can start with blockchain? Let's take an example of healthcare. One of the biggest problems in the healthcare industry is storing patient information. Doctors usually need your medical history to be able to diagnose your health accurately, but also patients' health details, identity details, and existence of fake medicines in the supply chain. If you use blockchain to store all that information, no one will have access to the patient's medical history without the permission of the patient. Even if you end up visiting another doctor in a different country, you can give that doctor access to your medical history. Blockchain can also avoid fake drugs in the market, since each drug could be safely tracked once it's stored in blockchain. It will make it easier and faster to trace the origins of that drug, store them safely, reduce the cost, and make the entire system much more effective. There are already a lot of startups in this field, but it's not widely adopted yet. Now is the best time to start a business in this field. Healthcare and financial industry are only two out of many, many industries where blockchain could be used. You do not need a lot of money in the beginning, since most people don't understand how the system works in the first place. Spending some time just to understand how it works will already give you a competitive advantage over others. Number 3. Online Tutoring for the last 20 years, everyone was talking about how worthless are college degrees, but most people didn't care much. But after a global pandemic, no one wants to pay these astronomical tuition fees while getting educated online. Whether we like it or not, the process to move to online education has begun, and this trend is only going to grow this year. But you know what most people don't like about online education? You don't feel the connection with the teacher. That makes the process a little ineffective. I mean, it's great when you are trying to reach a huge number of people, but on a personal level, most people want to feel that personal connection, which is why online tutoring is on the rise. In the past, it was a bit difficult since the tutor had to come to your place, but since online tutoring is getting widely accepted, you can easily make a lot of money as long as you're good in one field. Are you good at math? chemistry, science, there are millions of parents who will pay if you help their kids to learn faster. It's a little difficult to scale this business unless you create a platform or hire other tutors and start offering tutoring services on different subjects, but it's a perfect option if you don't have a lot of resources. Number 4. Start a fitness and wellness blog this is one of the businesses that I personally want to start, but I can't find the time to do so since I'm busy running my other businesses. With the rise of global pandemic, people are paying much bigger attention to their health and turning to Instagram bloggers who talk about fitness and health. I personally invest a lot of my health by working out at least three times a week, making sure that my diet is as healthy as possible and jogging every single morning. Maybe one day I will be making fitness videos on YouTube to share with you how I work out. This industry is growing so fast that even Apple launched dedicated fitness apps. When Apple gets into an industry, it gets serious. You don't have to work out for a few years before you can get into this business. Start your journey of getting into shape and share it with the world. People love following people with whom they can relate. If you end up inspiring others to start working out or taking care of their health, they will forever be grateful and watch everything you post. Then you can monetize this mass audience. Number 5. Trade in Amazon Let me ask you a simple question. What is the purpose of any business? Sales, right? Any business exists to sell a particular product or service. Some companies produce their products while others, like that corner shop beside your house, has a supplier. The job of that shop is to sell. In fact, the job of any business is just to sell. And Amazon is a platform where you can sell pretty much anything you want. In fact, you don't even have to manage your inventory. It's all taken care by Amazon. But how do I know what to sell on Amazon? Have you ever heard of Alibaba? It's like Amazon, but in China. 
most of the products are often sold for a fraction of what they usually cost in the United States. You can find there anything from gadgets to accessories to clothes to everything else. Your job is to buy low and sell high. It's not easy because you don't know what is in demand. But after some market research, you can figure that out. That's what every business does. They study the market and try to come up with a product that's in demand. It's time consuming. You will have to spend an endless number of hours to find the right product at the right price. That's how people make fortunes with Amazon. It's not easy as it was in the past since every single year the competition gets stronger, but there are still plenty of opportunities. All of the businesses we have discussed are practical. You don't have to be a genius or have millions of dollars to start. But you need the discipline and dedication to push yourself every single day to make it happen. Don't try them all at the same time. You will definitely fail. Choose one of them and give it your best. Even if you have a full-time job, start by spending a few hours after your job. Once you grow the business to the point where it could pay the bills, you can decide to quit your job if you want and further grow the business. How many crypto millionaires are there in the world? Just take a guess. 1,000, 5,000, 10,000? In fact, you can stop the video and write down your guess in the comment section. Let's see if you can guess it right. According to the cryptocurrency data tracking firm BitInfoCharts, there are over a hundred thousand people who have at least a million dollars or more stashed in Bitcoin. That figure was up from just 25,000 Bitcoin millionaires four months ago. And a year ago, there were only 15,000 Bitcoin millionaires. Imagine if we count in all other millionaires who hold different kind of cryptos such as Ethereum, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Stella and many more. I think there are a few hundred thousand of them. But you know what I like more than Bitcoin? Passive income. When you put the work up front and then enjoy the cash flow that comes in afterwards. Of course, it might need a little management, but overall, with minimum amount of effort, you can keep receiving that paycheck every month or every week. It might seem like you need a lot of money to build at least one or two sources of passive income, but not today. I mean, people are creating wealth out of nowhere, like in the case of cryptos. What makes you think that you can't build at least one if you have an internet connection? So let me share with you five passive income ideas that you can implement right now, right after watching this video. It doesn't matter if you have a full-time job or if you don't have a lot of money. These passive income ideas can be implemented literally by anyone. So if you're ready, all you have to do is give this video a thumbs up, just crush the like button and let's start with the first one. License your pictures. In the age of the internet, you can monetize pretty much anything, even your pictures. You probably have heard this a million times, but I'm going to give you a practical way to turn your pictures into passive income. This is not a scam, although it sounds like one. You see, content creators have to come up with content, and not everyone is ready to go and shoot videos or create illustrations such as this one. So our team, for example, relies on external sources to get these illustrations. Others use video footages or pictures to create videos such as Business Casual, Economics Explain, or even our second channel, Bloom. And we use tools such as Shutterstock, for example, to get these images. All you have to do is upload your pictures or videos to this website. And whenever someone would use your picture, you're going to get paid a small commission. In fact, you can start uploading the exact same pictures you have on your Instagram. It doesn't matter if they are pictures of your own or nature. As long as they look decent, you can give them a try. You're going to create passive income out of thin air. But what if you're not a fan of pictures? What if you don't take pictures all the time? Or you're just bad at taking pictures? Well, don't worry, because you can monetize your ideas. Sounds too good to be true. Before you jump into conclusions, let me explain. You're probably interested in something. It could be financial education, stock market, college, art, doesn't matter. There is at least one thing you're interested in. But what if I told you that instead of just sharing your ideas or opinions or knowledge with your friends over a drink on Friday night, you can share them with the world and monetize them. That's what blogging is. You don't necessarily have to make videos. I get it. It takes time, money and effort. 
but writing down your thoughts is easy. Just set up a website and turn your ideas into articles such as this one and put some ads on your website through Google AdSense. Every time someone opens your article, they would come across an ad and you're going to get paid a small commission for every ad that appears on your blog, which could turn into thousands of dollars if enough people would read your blog. Another way to monetize your blog is through affiliate marketing. If your blog is about fitness, for example, because you're trying to lose weight and build some muscles. In your blog, you might recommend some protein shakes or apps that would help you to track your calories, for example, or help you exercise more effectively. Pretty much every service has an affiliate program, which means you can get paid anything from 1% to 10 or even 20% if someone uses your link to buy that product. If someone would read your blog and would get value out of it, they would definitely use your link to buy that product since you have established trust with them. Every time I talk about books, for example, I make sure that I put affiliate links down in the description. So those of you who are interested in buying that book, you can do that using my links and we will get a small commission that will help us to grow the channel. You're not going to overpay. That company, or in this case, Amazon, would share with us a tiny percentage of the sale for driving the traffic to the store. Of course, with one or two links, you aren't going to go far, but imagine if you have dozens of articles or dozens of links. You might drive hundreds if not thousands of people and that small commissions will turn into a decent amount of money over a month. Number 4. Put some ads on your car. It sounds like a joke, but there is actually a way to make money by putting ads on your car. It's so weird that there are so many ways you can make money today through ads. What an age are we living in? Think about it. You drive your car anyway. You might drive every morning to your office, drop your kids at school, or just hit the hypermarket to do your groceries. Why not let your car generate some income while you're doing that? I know that putting ads on your car seems like too much. You might feel a bit uncomfortable, but who cares? You are earning money. And in case if you get tired of that, you can get rid of it whenever you want. You can expect to earn anything from $100 to $500 per month. Especially if you have a car loan, it is going to pay for your car. But be careful because there are a lot of scammers in this industry. It's going to take you some time to find a proper company that's willing to put ads on your car, but then you can forget about it while you will get a few hundred dollars every single month for just driving your car. And finally, government bonds. This is probably the easiest and the safest source of passive income. It doesn't require any skills or even effort. You're basically going to loan your money to the government and in return, the government is going to pay you interest for that. The government is going to take your money and spend it on the infrastructure or schools and so on to improve the productivity of the citizens and in return, their income would rise and they will pay more taxes, which the government is going to use to pay you back. But you don't have to wait for the government to pay you back. You can simply sell it in the secondary market. Government bonds vary from 3 months to 30 years. The longer the period is, the higher the interest. 10-year-old bonds, which are the most popular ones, have a yield of 1.61% now, which is not that high. But you have to understand that interest rates are extremely low right now. So do government bonds. When the Fed is going to raise the rates, bond rates will rise as well. It might not be the best option now, but it will be in the coming future because sooner or later, interest rates will be raised. At least it's much better option than keeping your money in a bank that doesn't pay even a 1% interest. But on the other hand, it's a safe investment. What are the chances that the US government will go bankrupt? Pretty low if not zero, since the US government is the source of dollar. So if you want a safe passive income that doesn't require any effort, then government bonds are your ideal option. There are hundreds if not thousands of ways to create passive income, especially in the age of internet. You might not be able to implement all of them, but you can at least try one of them. How much you would have made if you have invested $1000 in Tesla back when it went public? It wasn't that long ago, just 10 years ago. Take a guess. $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. Well, 10xing your money or growing it by 30 times is great, but that's not even close. 
If you have invested $1,000 in Tesla on March 7, 2011, today that investment would worth almost $120,000. Your total profits from that investment today would equal $118,829, with an annual return of 61.26%. Investing just $10,000 in Tesla back in 2011 would have turned you into a multi-millionaire. Investing $100,000 in Tesla would have earned you more money than you could possibly spend. But it was a big bet. I mean, Tesla is valued this much because of Musk's unbelievable marketing skills. If you take a look at the numbers, Tesla is valued based on what it could potentially achieve in the next 5 to 10 years. The fear of missing out has led many investors to invest in Tesla. But the question that we want to focus on in this video is, if you have an extra $10,000, where should you invest it? What are your best options? First of all, if you have managed to save $10,000, Congrats, not many people can do that. Most people barely save any money for an emergency fund. And even if they manage to save anything, they quickly splash it on unnecessary things. Just take a look at the data. Most young people have a negative net worth. 69% of US adults have less than $1,000 in savings, while 34% have no savings at all. So with an extra $10,000, you can consider yourself in the top 30% of the wealthiest Americans. And now the question is, where do you go from there? What should you do with that $10,000? Is there a way to double or triple that $10,000 or maybe grow it to millions? We will answer all of those questions and many more. But before we do that, give this video a thumbs up that it deserves and here is a little disclaimer. This is not financial advice, and everything that's said in this video is for educational entertainment purposes. And now, let's dive in. Number 1. High Risk Individual Stocks The stock market can do wonders, especially when there is a company that is about to disturb a certain industry. In a matter of 10 to 15 years, the stock market can grow astronomically. I'm not talking about 10 or 20%, but rather about a few thousand percent. Amazon, for example, since it went public in 1997, has grown by 212,000%. That's more than any other stock. $10,000 invested in Amazon back in 1997 would have now worth $21.3 million. But Amazon is not unique. There are plenty of companies that had grown similarly. Best Buy is another example. Since 1990, Best Buy has generated a total sum of 108,000%, or about 26.2% annually. A $10,000 investment in Best Buy in 1990 would now worth $10.9 million. It's easy to feel bad for missing such an opportunity, but you should not, because there will always be the next hot stock. Every single day, dozens of startups emerge trying to disturb everything, so one way I would invest an extra $10,000 is by throwing it into a few tech companies that seem to have a chance to revolutionize a certain industry. I wouldn't choose just one because I could end up making the wrong bet. But splitting it into 3-4 companies could end up into a real fortune over the long run. Number 2. Hold it until an opportunity strikes. One of the biggest obstacles I came across is the fear of missing out. Every single day that I keep the money in my bank account means that I'm losing money. Because first of all, inflation devalues the real value of my money. And secondly, I'm missing the potential returns I could be making even from just throwing it into the S&P 500. But what I have learned after making multiple mistakes is don't rush. If you're missing a market rally, it is alright. The market will jump up and down all the time. Don't try to take advantage out of all small opportunities. Focus on the big gains. If you're not sure, just keep your money. Remember Buffett's two most important rules of money. Number one, don't lose money. Number two, never forget the first rule. Sometimes there comes an opportunity when you are 100% confident that it's one in a lifetime opportunity and that $10,000 could turn you into a multi-millionaire. That's when you should invest. 
Number three, Roth IRA. We sometimes complain about how rich people avoid paying taxes by creating complicated schemes. We blame the system for being corrupt. However, there is a simple way that anyone can avoid paying taxes, but they don't. A Roth IRA is an individual retirement account that you can use to make investments and pay no taxes on them. Wait a second, no taxes? How is that possible? When you get paid, you pay taxes on your income, so your income has already been taxed. If you use that money to invest through a Roth IRA account, your income is not going to be taxed again, no matter how big your investment is going to grow. Let's say you opened a Roth IRA account in 2011 and invested $1,000 in Tesla that has grown to $120,000 by 2021. You absolutely have to pay no taxes on that if you hold that money until the age of 59.5. You can withdraw your initial investment, which was $1,000 in this example, and still avoid paying taxes. But if you want your gains not to be taxed as well, then you should keep that money until the age of 59.5. It is free, easy, and you should do it as soon as you can. The only problem is that you can only contribute to your Roth IRA account $6,000 or $7,000 if you are 50 or older. Let's say you're 20 years old and you invest $6,000 out of that $10,000 into the S&P 500 through your Roth IRA account. Next year, you do the same thing and keep repeating it until the age of 60. You will end up with $3.2 million that you don't have to pay any taxes on. In fact, every year you can withdraw your initial investment tax-free. One of the people who took maximum advantage out of this is Peter Thiel. In 1999, Peter Thiel used his Roth IRA account to buy PayPal shares worth $2,000. He was given a special prize since he was one of the founders of the company. But by the end of 2019, his Roth IRA account has grown to $5 billion and he doesn't have to pay a dime in taxes on that money. Brilliant! Number four, try a business. If you have a family or financial responsibilities, maybe you should not take this path because there is a higher risk of losing your money if you're starting any business. But if you are in your 20s, then it could exactly be what you need. Whenever you invest in stocks or other assets, you have very little control over it. Other people decide what to do with your money. The growth of your money depends on how hard other people are going to work. But when you invest in a business that you have full control over, even if it turns out badly, you have the ability to put more hours, be more creative, and still do something about it. I know that $10,000 is not a lot of money when it comes to starting a business. Yes, when you have a big capital, it's much easier. But that's the point. $10,000 is enough to get you started, especially when it comes to something online. People start online businesses for a fraction of that amount. So, you don't have any excuses. And finally, real estate. What? What can I do with just $10,000 in real estate? Before you drop a negative comment, listen to what I have to say. But if you still insist on doing something, just drop a like. That will help the channel greatly. What sets real estate apart from all other investments is that you can use leverage safely. Maybe with $10,000 it might be difficult to find something, but with twenty dollars or $30,000 you can easily control properties worth $300,000 or $400,000. When you use leverage in forex, stock market or crypto, your broker immediately closes your position if the price of the asset dips below the amount you have deposited. But when it comes to real estate, the bank cannot do that since you have a 30-year mortgage contract. On top of that, you can get your tenants to pay your mortgage. Yes, you don't always get a good deal in real estate, especially now. But judging by historical data, real estate prices in the long run always rise. They crashed in 2008, recovered by 2013 and have been rising since then. This means sooner or later, rent prices will rise to a point where that property will be profitable. And we did not even consider the fact that the value of that property will rise over time as well. If you could save $10,000, 
that means you are disciplined enough to double, triple or grow it by a much larger percentage. The most important thing is not to rush with your decision. Don't let the fear of missing out push you to waste that money. And now it's time to go and get your two free stocks from Webull if you use the link in the description or check out my special course on Skillshare that will teach you how to invest in the stock market like those rich people do. There is no limit to how much you want. Even a hundred trillion dollars is not enough. Because once you have the entire planet, you would want to go to Mars. You perfectly know who I am talking about. On the other side, the good news is that once these people leave the Earth, they will no longer be on the Forbes list because the Forbes list considers people who live here on Earth, which means now you have a higher chance to be on the top of the Forbes list. But I think the founder of LVMH, Bernard Arnold, will take their position because apparently it seems like you don't need to build a tech company to become world's richest person. All you have to do is sell overpriced handbags to people who make a lot of money but are still dumb enough to waste all that money on overpriced handbags with a logo that literally says, I have paid $5,000 for this handbag that literally performs the exact same job that any other handbag does. That cost $10. But you can't call them dumb because they're making so much money. But they could be dumb because they're wasting that money on dumb things. So I will leave that question for you to answer in the comment section. I do not mean to offend anyone, I just can't understand why anyone would pay five or ten thousand dollars for a handbag. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand that. Let's get back to the question of this video. How much money do you need to retire? Let's just be realistic. Ten million dollars? A hundred million dollars? A billion dollars? The answer is far from that. In order to answer that question, we have to take a look at a few statistics. In 2019, right before the pandemic, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said that the median personal income is $36,000 or $61,000 for households. But let's ignore the median and focus on the average household income, which is $88,000. Of course, this number is not accurate for everyone because if you are in your 20s, you need far less money compared to someone who is in their 60s who needs to pay a fortune on insurance because with age comes health problems. That's why if you want to save money, take care of your health and stop eating all that junk food. The next question is, how much do you need to invest in order to earn $87,864 every single year without doing anything? We're going to take a look at a few available options and we will do the math. If that number is higher or lower for you, you can just take that equation and use a different number that suits your circumstances more accurately. Don't be scared of the numbers we'll talk about because at the end of the video, it will all make sense. That's why it's important to pay attention. I get it, it's not easy. After watching 15 seconds TikTok videos, watching a 10 minute YouTube video seems like a 3 hour movie. But I promise, the value you will get from this video is far more than you will get from browsing TikTok for hours. Have you heard the phrase, never spend the principal, only spend the interest? And that's the key to financial freedom. If you have inherited 10 million dollars, let's say you invested and get a 5% interest annually. That's half a million dollars a year. For the rest of your life, you could constantly spend half a million dollars or $41,606 every single month for the rest of your life. And your wealth won't even decrease by a single penny. That's way better than splashing $10 million in one single night. But the key question is, since the average household income is $87,864, how much do you need to invest to make that much money every single year? For the sake of this example, we're not going to take any risky investments such as crypto or individual stocks such as Tesla or GameStop. We are going to be ultra conservative and take something super stable, something that historically has proven to grow by a decent percent, like the S&P 500 that grows by around 10% a year. 10% out of $878,640 is $87,864, the amount we are looking for. This means if you manage to invest $878,000 for the rest of your life, you can spend $87,000 and your wealth will remain the same. But the problem is that 
how do you save $878,640 when the average household income is $88,000? That's literally saving every single penny you earn for 10 straight years, which is impossible for most people. And that's the average, which means most people who are in their 20s do not make anything close to that. And that's where the magic of compound interest comes into the picture. Let's say you are 21 years old, you're about to graduate and looking for a job. But luckily, you have saved $1,000. Whether you partied less, avoided cool Starbucks coffees, or you were single during your college days. That's one of the benefits of being single. But does it worth it? Anyways, let's assume you will invest that amount into the S&P 500 and completely forget about it. You're not going to withdraw it the next September when the new iPhone comes up or when you have no money left to hang out with your friends. You will live as if you have never had that money in the first place. And every single year, till the time you retire, you commit to invest $1,000 into the S&P 500. When you retire at 66, you will end up with $863,685 or $86,368 every single year. By saving just $1,000 a year, you have built wealth that's worth almost a million dollars and generates $86,000 a year. That's why Einstein once said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. I know that waiting for 45 years sounds like a really, really long time, but we also took a very small amount of money. Saving $1,000 is not a big deal for most of the people who are watching this video. We can take a more extreme example where you could save three or $5,000 and you won't have to wait for 45 years to reap the rewards of compound interest. Let me know in the comment section below, how much are you willing to invest a year? But not everything is sunshine and rainbows. While in theory it's possible to get a 10% rate of return, in practice it gets slightly more complicated. The inflation rate in the US is around 2-3%, to which means if you don't want the real value of your investment to decrease every single year by 2-3%, or you should not withdraw more than 7% of your investments. On top of it, if you want your investment to grow by at least a small margin, like 2%, you're left with just 5%. So, if you want to be able to withdraw $87,000 every single year and be confident that inflation won't wipe away your wealth over time, you have to invest double that amount, or $1.7 million, or $2,000 every single year instead of $1,000 which is still reasonable for most people. If you check out the FIRE community on the internet, you will find out endless examples of people lived frugally for 5, 10 or 15 years and saved the vast majority of their earnings, but eventually became financially independent. You don't have to go that extreme because life without work is boring, so you can pursue this strategy as a backup plan in case if things go south. But you probably have a million questions about how is that possible. I get it. I was once in your position. And to answer all of your questions, I have created a course that's simple, straightforward, and fully animated. I've literally answered almost all of the questions you have in your mind. I strongly recommend it if you're serious about investing. It will not just teach you how to invest in index funds, but teach you also how to analyze stocks, how to read financial statements. And at the end of the course, you will have to complete an assignment that I will personally check. And the best part of it is that you can get two weeks of Skillshare Premium if you use the link in the description and get the course for free. So don't miss it. But what you also have to keep in mind is that you should not do anything with your money unless you have covered your credit card debts first. If your credit card has an annual percentage rate of let's say 20%, that doesn't mean you get charged 20% interest once a year, depending on how you manage your account. That's because interest is calculated on a daily basis, not annually, and it's charged only if you carry debt from month to month. So it doesn't make sense to aim for a 10% rate of return while you have a debt with a 20% interest. For the last six months, you have been thinking to start a business. The only problem you have is you don't know what business to start. One day on your way to college, an idea strikes your mind. 
You pull out your phone and write it down. You rush to your home and start planning. Everything looks perfect. You know how to turn your business idea into a multi-billion dollar company. Congrats. But it's too early to celebrate because you don't have the capital to start. You gather your family members and you explain to them the idea, hoping that they will invest in the company. Everyone thinks you're crazy, except your uncle. He decides to bet on you. $10,000 in exchange of 20% of the company. It might not seem much, but it's actually a lot. Because your uncle just valued your idea that's not proven yet at $50,000. So you register your company and issue 100,000 shares, and your uncle gets 20,000 of them. You start building your website and designing your product. In a few months, you run out of cash, and you need to raise more money. Unlike the first time where you simply had an idea, now you have a concept to show. So instead of going to your uncle again, now you can do something different like talking to some of the big guys, such as angel investors. Angel investors are usually the rich dudes who are looking for innovative ideas or young entrepreneurs to invest in, something like sharks in the shark tank. It's not easy to convince these guys to throw money into your business, because statistically, 9 out of 10 businesses fail, and you have to prove to them why you are an exception. After talking to multiple angel investors, luckily, you could get one of them on board. But first, you have to agree on the valuation. There is pre-money valuation and post-money valuation. It's not as difficult as it sounds. Pre-money valuation is how you value the company before receiving the investment, and post-money valuation is pre-money valuation plus the investment. The higher the pre-money valuation, the less portion of the company the investor is going to take. You enter into a negotiation and you convince the investor to throw $1 million into your business with $2 million cost money valuation. So the investor is going to take 50% of the company, and your shares will get diluted together with your uncle's one. That doesn't mean you are going to have fewer shares, the company will simply issue another 100,000 shares for the investor. So now there are a total of 200,000 shares, and your stake is 40%. With a million dollars, you rent an office, hire some graphic designers, engineers, and specialists to complete your product. Finally, everything is ready. You're about to launch your product, app or service, whatever. But guess what? You're out of cash again, and you still need a marketing budget and salespeople. So you decide to raise some more money. You go for a Series B. This time, you meet some VCs or venture capitalists. They're not your typical angel investors. These are the guys with MBAs and work in venture capitalist firms who take other people's money and invest in companies such as yours. Anyways, after multiple negotiations, they decide to bet on you. Since you already have a team and a product to launch, your company hopefully now worth more. Let's say VC offers you a $10 million investment with $20 million post money valuation. You find that offer fair and you accept it. The company issues another 200,000 shares and everyone's stake get diluted again. Since the VC just purchased 50% of the company. In case you're wondering, no one has lost money so far. In fact, everyone just got richer. The angel investor, for example, had 50% of $2 million when he invested in the company. Now he has 25% of a company that's worth $20 million, which is $5 million. In fact, your stake now worth $4 million. Anyways, you can go for series C, D, and so on. Few years has passed, congrats, you have made it. Your idea turns out to be a success. Your business is finally making money. Remember, everyone who has invested in your company has been waiting for you to grow big enough so that they can cash out especially your uncle who's $10,000 now worth millions. You have two options. You either get sold to one of the giants of the industry like Instagram did, or you go public like Tesla. And that's known as IPO, Initial Public Offering. It's just another way to raise funds and issue shares. But this time, anyone can buy them. They're open to the public. In fact, people can buy and sell your shares among themselves in the stock market. Of course, we have missed many things in this video, but it's the short, oversimplified version of how you raise money for your business.